Now we move to the last chapter, the final phase of her struggle for independence. After the Second World War, there was a change in British attitude towards India. There were two important reasons for this. First, even though the Allied countries won the Second World War, they suffered major losses, especially Britain, which was weakened politically, economically and militarily. The second reason was change in power in Britain. Prime Minister Churchill was defeated by the Labour Party's Clement Attlee. Clement Attlee was a member of Simon Commission that visited India in 1928. He was sympathetic towards India's struggle for independence. He realized that post the war, Britain was not strong enough to retain control over India, so he was committed to transfer of power in India. Let's see some important events in the last phase of our struggle for independence. First, the CR formula. In 1944, C. Rajagopalachari proposed a solution for the constitutional deadlock. The Muslim League wanted a separate nation in the form of Pakistan, but Congress and other Hindu organizations were opposed to partitioning the country. So in a pamphlet entitled The Way Out, he put forth a doctrine called Back to Crips. In this, C. Rajagopalachari suggested holding a plebiscite in the Muslim majority areas so that the people in those areas could decide what they wanted. But Jinnah was afraid that this would result in a smaller area for Pakistan. So he rejected this proposal. Gandhi and Jinnah held a series of talks over this issue. Gandhi suggested that even if Pakistan was separated, both India and Pakistan should stay together in a confederation. Jinnah responded that such an agreement is only possible after the partition is done. Then came the Wevel plan. Lord Linlithgow was replaced by Lord Wevel as the Voice of India in 1944. In March 1945, Lord Wevel went to London to discuss the future course of action in India. On his return to India, he made a proposal in June 1945. He proposed to form a national government comprising of Indian members except for the post of Governor General and Commander in Chief. The members of the government would represent all the main communities of India. To discuss this plan, he called the members of the Congress and the Muslim League for a conference at Simla on June 5, 1945. The Congress was ready to accept this plan. And even though the plan said nothing about a separate Pakistan, Jinnah was ready to accept the plan. But he had one condition. He insisted that he should have the sole right to nominate Muslim ministers of the national government. Congress firmly opposed this. So Wevel made a list of members of national government which included only one Muslim member of the Unionist Party of Punjab. It included no Muslim members of Congress, but Jinnah rejected this list. Thus, the conference failed. The British government decided to hold elections for provincial assemblies so that they in turn could elect a national government and a constituent assembly to frame a constitution for independent India. The elections were held in early 1946. The Congress swept the general seats and the Muslim League swept the Muslim seats, except in Northwest Frontier Province. The Muslim League captured about 90% of all the Muslim seats. But before the elections for national government could be held, there was a mutiny of the Royal Indian Navy. On February 18, 1946, 1100 soldiers of HMIS Talwar revolted in Bombay. They protested against the racial discrimination, bad food and other treatment meted out to them. They also demanded release of INA prisoners, acceptance of Indian officers as superiors and withdrawal of Indian troops from Indonesia. Four days later, on 22nd February 1946, Bombay workers revolted. Students and workers came out in support of the naval mutiny. The national leaders did not support this mutiny. Gandhi and Sardar Patel asked the protesters to end this revolt. But revolt continued and angry protesters destroyed shops, post offices, police thanas, etc. Revolt was also seen in Karachi. Students boycotted classes and demonstrations were held in support of the naval mutiny. The Britishers finally managed to suppress the revolt, but this incident shook the government. So in March 1946, the cabinet mission was sent to India. The mission included three cabinet members of the British government, Lord Pethick Lawrence, Sir Stafford Cripps and A.V. Alexander. Let's see the cabinet mission plan in detail. The cabinet mission proposed forming an interim government based on division of subjects of governance. With the union government having control over defense, foreign affairs and communication and the rest of the subjects with the provincial governments and prince districts. The provinces were to be divided into three groups. 
ग्रुप ए विथ सिक्स हिंदू मेजोरिटी प्रोविंसेस ग्रुप बी विथ फोर मुस्लिम मेजोरिटी प्रोविंसेस एंड ग्रुप सी कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ आसाम एंड बंगाल इट प्रपोज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मेकिंग बॉडी इलेक्टेड बाई प्रोविंशियल लेजिस्लेचर्स बेस्ड ऑन कम्युनल इलेक्ट्रेट्स मेम्बर्स रिप्रेजेंटिंग प्रिंसली स्टेट्स वुड बी नॉमिनेटेड बाय द रूलर्स ऑफ दीज स्टेट्स बोथ द कांग्रेस एंड द मुस्लिम लीग एक्सेप्टेड द प्लान द इलेक्शन फॉर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली वे हेल्ड इन जुलाई नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स द कांग्रेस स्वेप्ट द पोल्स सो द मुस्लिम लीग विड्रू इट्स सपोर्ट फॉर द कैबिनेट मिशन प्लान ऑन नाइन्थ जुलाई नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स द मुस्लिम लीग डिक्लेयर दैट इट वुड रिजॉर्ट टू डायरेक्ट एक्शन टू विन पाकिस्तान सिक्सटीन ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स वॉज ऑब्जर्व एज द डायरेक्ट एक्शन डे बाय द मुस्लिम लीग कम्युनल डिस्टर्बेंसेस इरप्टेड एट कैलकटा बॉम्बे यूपी एंड बिहार वॉइस रॉय वेवल वॉन्टेड इंडियंस टू शेयर द बर्डन ऑफ हैंडलिंग दिस सिचुएशन सो ही इमीजिएटली पुस्ट फॉर फॉर्मिंग द इंटरिम गवर्नमेंट ही अनाउंसड एन इंटरिम गवर्नमेंट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ कांग्रेस नॉमिनीज ऑन सेप्टेम्बर सेकेंड नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स वॉइस रॉय वेवल रिमेंड इट्स प्रेसिडेंट एंड जवाहरलाल नेहरू वॉज मेड इट्स वाइस प्रेसिडेंट जिना डिड नॉट वॉन्ट मुस्लिम लीग मेम्बर्स टू जॉइन द इंटरिम गवर्नमेंट But Vice Chair Wevel succeeded in having five members of Muslim League join the government on 6 October 1946. Now let's see how the work of framing the constitution was carried out. Based on the cabinet mission plan, the Constituent Assembly was formed to frame a constitution for independent India. The Congress wanted the constitution to be framed with the cooperation of all the parties. The Constituent Assembly met on December 9, 1946. The Muslim League did not participate. In January 1947 the assembly met once again Rajendra Prasad was made the president of constituent assembly here it passed Nehru's objectives resolution the muslim league in its karachi session on january 31st 1947 passed a resolution to reject the constituent assembly voiceroy wevel hoped that the league would join the constituent assembly just like it joined the interim government but during the same time prime minister of britain clement attlee and voiceroy wevel had some differences over the final declaration of aims of the british government wevel even proposed a breakdown plan which would start a gradual withdrawal of the british army from india but atlee was unhappy with the wevel's breakdown plan so he replaced wevel with lord mountbatten on february 20th 1947 prime minister atlee announced that the british government would transfer control over india to responsible indian government by june 1948 Lord Mountbatten made his own plan called Plan Balkan. It called for partition of India into two independent nations, India and Pakistan. Even Nehru by now was convinced that this was the only solution going ahead. The Plan Balkan provided that any province or princely state not willing to join either of the two nations are free to opt out. This provision had the potential of complete balkanization of India into several independent units. So to prevent further divisions of India Nehru pushed Mountbatten for awarding a separate Pakistan to Jinnah Now this is what Jinnah always wanted a separate Pakistan but Nehru insisted that he would not get the entire undivided Punjab and undivided Bengal but only the Muslim majority districts of both these provinces Both Mountbatten and Jinnah accepted Nehru's proposal Finally the Government of India Act 1935 was amended to form the Independence of India Act 1947 The date of independence for both these nations was fixed for 14th and 15th August 1947. Two commissions appointed under Sir Cyril Ratcliffe saw through the demarcation of international boundaries between these two countries. On the stroke of midnight of 15th August 1947, India finally achieved its independence. Jawaharlal Nehru became its first prime minister. Lord Mountbatten continued to be the governor general for a while until he was replaced by C Rajagopalachari.